Good evening, YouTube. You guys are now watching another segment of the Cali Effect King of Games. And today, we are going to be watching an epic duel. That is right, trains in 2019, ladies and gentlemen. I would not steer you wrong. Trains have a little bit left in the caboose to be able to compete. Thomas Yang is going to be showing off an insanely powerful train deck against Heather Lewis and an unorthodox Solomon Great deck. It's actually, uh, it isn't bad. You know, there are certain cards that you can play in Solomon Solomon Great that makes your Solomon Great just Solomon trash. And he plays some unorthodox cards that allow him to do some different things, but still wind up with the same great results. So it's really interesting to see. And if you guys want to see your replays on the Cali Effect, then go ahead and follow this screen right here. Make sure you send your replay to dualanalysis at gmail.com. And please, please make sure that it is a dueling book replay. We are only at this moment accepting dueling book replays. I'm not trying to get a virus, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys understand. I would prefer for your deck to be against a meta deck or be a match or just against all of the meta decks and whether you win or lose i am trying to see those spicy plays so go ahead and send me your replays ladies and gentlemen send me what you have and show me what you got we're gonna be starting off with thomas yang and heather lewis in this rock paper scissors about who will win and it looks like thomas is gonna pick scissors heather lewis with the paper in this match is already over ladies and gentlemen gg no re scoop it up thomas with the win not much else to say after that we can pretty much go home after that it looks like both players are exchanging their good luck, have fun, as Dueling Book is. And Thomas is surprisingly going to pick to go second, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at his hand. He has Hey True Nade, a very going second card, so you can assume that this entire train deck is a going second train deck. He also has Derek Kane, Roving Switchyard, Night Express, and Mind Control. Now, the thing I want to talk about with these two cards is that if you're playing Hey True Nade against Sky Strikers, you can go ahead and activate Hey True Nade in your opening sequence and get rid of all of their phase down cards, all of that phase down Widow Anchors or anything to stop you, and then start to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Whereas Mind Control, you can snatch against, uh, you know, your Thunder Dragon players, you can take their Colossus or whatever their monster is, or you can bait out in the gate. And even against Solomon Great, you can take their Sunlight Wolf to eventually turn off their, you know, their important Solomon Great trap cards. So it's really interesting to see, I don't know why I have it on pause. So it's really interesting to see how uh, Heathrow Lewis is going to be able to play into to this board he's gonna go ahead and start off his turn by activating or summoning a monster normally i just kind of like blaze through the videos just to see if it's a good video and then i'm like oh, okay now we'll commentate over it so uh, as much as i do kind of remember what's going on i go through a lot of videos ladies and gentlemen so i'm not really sure what exactly goes down he's gonna go ahead and use pot of desires banishing 10 cards from his deck to draw two additional cards and this is what I'm talking about by that extra spice. Pot of Desires is a great card when you're banishing cards like Twin Twisters, Effect Veiler, Solemn Strike, DD Crow. Whoa, Solomon Great Spinny, Solomon Great Roar, Lady Debug, Forbidden Chalice, Gazelle, and Foxy. Whoa, this has to be probably the best Desires of all time. He banished all one of, not a single two of, and none of these cards actually matter in the long game. Let's say, for example, if his first five cards were Twin Twisters, Effect Veiler, Solemn Strike, and DD Crow, those don't matter you want your solomon grade cards first and seeing that he drew into solomon great circle he's actually in an amazing position to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Pot of Desires in Solomon Great is something that has been played and it turns out to be really good in this particular build so he's going to go ahead and get that Solomon Great Gazelle and now I can assume he's going to normal summon a Solomon Great monster probably not Gazelle maybe Spinny uh, maybe uh, Jack Jaguar to his side of the field so we can start popping off with his plays. So Thomas is going to say, I would cut the desires if I were you. It's not needed. This is incorrect, ladies and gentlemen. I wouldn't say that you have to play desires, but you don't, not playing desires and playing desires is, is, is it's almost at preference right now. You can play desires and still have a good Solomon Great deck, especially when you're getting banishes like this. Like it doesn't matter. Every single card in the Solomon Great strategy, you just, now that that's just a dumb comment it hurts the consistency you play three of just about everything in this deck so the rule of desires is if you play three of everything then desires is free so i i don't i definitely disagree with this comment um there are obviously some decks that do that will hurt the consistency such as uh maybe a like for, for example this deck would be perfect with desires like you play desires you you get free cards but um let's say for example uh, like blue eyes uh, the new blue eyes that need certain cards inside of his deck to sing with dark matter dragon but yes desires would hurt because you don't want to banish those cards but in a deck where Solomon great where you play just about three of everything 
The only thing that you're risking is banishing your Jack Jaguar, your Falco. You're pretty much good. He's going to go ahead and use, and since he already had the Falco in his hand, he's going to start to pop off with his combos. He's going to use that Falco immediately for Bane Links and then chain Gazelle to summon itself to the side of the field. Now, he's going to make Gazelle edge chain link one because that's obviously the card that you don't want to be hit. Um, the Bay Links is going to allow him to get the Solomon Great Sanctuary from his deck to his hand. Or maybe, wait, timeout. Maybe he didn't, He because he's he's going to send with the Gazelle. I, I'm assuming because he didn't even call his Bay Links as two. So does he does he already have the Sanctuary in his hand? That That's a struggle bus, ladies and gentlemen, if you already have the Sanctuary. And it looks like he did. He's not even going to resolve the Bay Links. Gazelle is just one. No chain blocking. He's going to use the Solomon Great Spinny to um, discard itself to give his monster attack. And then he's going to use Spinny to summon itself to his side of the field. So he didn't draw the best of hands, but Desires definitely put him in a better position to make this play. So if you can say that, yes, Desires isn't great, especially if you're banishing cards like your Solomon Great Falco or your Jack Jaguar and stuff, that sucks. But at the same time, he wasn't able to play Yu-Gi-Oh! in this particular turn, so he would have lost. And now he's actually uh, having the ability to play Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, so that's pretty good. He's going to use both his Spinny and his Gazelle for a Link Summon to Mirage Stalio. You guys should already know this part of Yu-Gi-Oh! Detaching the Mirage Stalio to Special Summon the Jack Jaguar from his deck to his side of the field. And, and I can't lie, that, that was a really good Desires. That, that was... That that was he, he wanted that Jack Jaguar to be banished. We already see what's going on. You hate that desires. You want it to be banished. He's gonna go ahead and make Sunlight Wolf by using the Bay Links and the Jack Jaguar. And this is a huh? You need the Jack Jaguar, the level four monster on your field, to summon itself back to the side of the field. And now he's gonna use the Jack Jaguar to recycle the monster. And it, he doesn't have the Sunlight Wolf. Like we know you have the Sanctuary in your hand. You can activate the Sanctuary, Sanctuary to turn the Sunlight Wolf into another Sunlight Wolf, recur the Gazelle, and then do it that way. But no, it looks like uh, Hurt Lewis is going to do it his own way. He's going to go ahead and return that Falco to summon Jack Jaguar back to his side of the field. And then he's going to gain the effect of Sunlight Wolf. Actually, no, this 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 makes sense. Because if the opponent does have the hand trap on the second Sunlight Wolf, like Effect Veiler, you'd be in a pretty tough situation because you he can Effect Veiler this Sunlight Wolf. Okay, you just activate your spell card, your field spell, turn your Sunlight Wolf into a second Sunlight Wolf, and at least you get something. This way, he'll get something. So I can understand that. He's also going to chain Solomon Great Foul to his side of the field, which is actually a really interesting Solomon Great card. If a Solomon Great a monster, except for Foul, is a normal summon to spell summon, you can spell summon its card from your hand. I love this card. I, I do. I just like it because it's a free level 4 extender. He can keep his Mirage style on this sequence and still being able to make that rank 4, whether it is a Biz Dweller or it's Baguska. So he's going to go ahead and recur his Gazelle through his Solomon Great Sunlight Wolf. And now he's going to make Baguska and pass his turn with a card face down. This puts Thomas in a very interesting situation. He has Ash Blossom as his sixth card. And this would have been a little bit helpful, like, uh, somewhere. <coughs> Excuse me. This would have been helpful to hit the Mirage Stalio or something. I mean, I don't know. I hate drawing the hand trap that you need as your sixth card. It's probably the worst feeling. It looks like Thomas is going to start off with a Hatred A, bouncing those face down cards. Uh, I mean, I guess Lewis can use it to negate the true nade, but then it like it doesn't serve his purpose. But uh, yeah, he's gonna be able to get rid of that back row, and now he's gonna use mind control on the Baguska. He broke the board, ladies and gentlemen, because those were two cards that he'd have to worry about the negation and Baguska being able to prevent him from basically playing Yu-Gi-Oh by switching the Baguska to attack. Um, he he obviously doesn't get the defense position effect, but it says uh. This attack position card cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Your opponent cannot target this attack position card with card effects. I mean, that that's that's not a great effect, but it's better than having it in defense right now when you need to get your monsters to your side of the field. So it looks like Yang is in a really good position, summoning that Night Express and then summoning that Duracane, using them both for an Exceed Summon into his Super Dreadnought Rel Cannon Gustav Max, and then inflicting 2,000 damage to his opponent. Will he have enough for game? Yes, he does, as he's going to make the Super Dreadnought Rel Cannon Juggernaut to his side of the field and be able to attack both the Mirage Stelio and the Salomon Great Sunlight wolf for game ladies and gentlemen this is crazy in three cards thomas yang was able to completely maybe four cards i can't count he was able to completely dismantle hearth lewis in a pretty good solomon grade board especially when you consider that solomon grades did not have the best of hands
So both decks are done siding, and now we're going to enter in game two. We can only assume that Lewis may want to trains to go first unless, you know, he senses that Thomas Yang is counter siding, so he's going to go first. But no, it looks like he's going to force Thomas Yang to go first. <laughs> Who's only going to set two cards face down? <coughs> I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I was completely Walter White in that over there. I might have to go to the doctor for that cough. No, I'm just playing. But basically, um, the Thomas Yang went ahead and set two cards face down and passed his turn. And Heath Lewis starts off his turn with Solomon Great Circle. So it's going to be really interesting to see how these two decks play it out on game two. With Thomas already securing win one, he only needs one more win to win, obviously, this entire match. So uh, I, I don't. I like stating the obvious sometimes. Heath Lewis is going to go ahead and use that Solomon Great Circle to get a gazelle from his deck to his hand and then he's going to normal summon Salomon Great Foxy to his side of the field. Foxy's effect is going to reveal three Salomon Great cards. Can it add a monster? Just making sure. Add one Salomon Great card to your hand. Huh. It can add a trap card. So he's going to reveal Rage, Strike, and Salomon Great Falco. Um, in this particular situation, uh, Falco, this is kind of sense of the degree. You can talk about Salomon Great, blah, blah, blah. So I know if you do special summon this card. Mm. I probably would have gotten the rage. Depending on my hand, I'm pretty sure I could have set up with rage and roar in this in this turn and would have had some pretty good negates. We saw Thomas Yang play through, uh, you know, two negates, Baguska and the uh, Solomon Great Roar. I want to see him play through three negates, the roar, a rage, and a Baguska to the side of the field. He's going to go ahead and use that Foxy for a Link Summon. I'm assuming that he doesn't have the hand that he wants. And two Salomon Great Bay Links. And then next, since he's already used his normal summon, he's going to go ahead and special summon the Salomon Great Gazelle to a side of the field. Bay Links is Chain Link 2. Oh no, he wants Bay Links is Chain Link 1. Gazelle is Chain Link 2. And the reason why you do it this way is so your opponent can't Ash Blossom and Joy Spring your Salomon Great Bay Links. But they can Ash Blossom and Joy Spring your Gazelle. I mean, plot twist, they kind of can't because Gazelle doesn't have an effect to add from deck to hand or send to the graveyard whatsoever in its summoning effect. It has effect when it's summoned, but not its first effect. So Bay Links is completely safe from any disruptions right now. And then it's going to go ahead and send from his deck to the graveyard with the Gazelle Foolish effect. The pizza guy came. Well, that's a pretty good reason not to, you know, to take so long. I mean, hey, I, I like pizza too. He's going to send Will of the Solomon Great. During your main phase, you can spell summon one Solomon Great monster from your hand to the graveyard. You can send this face-up card from the field to the graveyard to target one Solomon Great link monster that was used. Blah, blah, blah. It's the same link. Spell summon the Solomon Great monster from your hand or graveyard in defense division up to that monster's link rating. You can only use Will of the Solomon Great once per turn and only once that turn. So that's a pretty good card. He's already expecting to be uh, stopped, which is a call by the Great Face down um urgent schedule won't do anything but still that, that he's already expecting some type of foolery right here so he's gonna go ahead and use the second effect of solomon great spinning and thomas yang has the call by the grave i think this lewis guy is a lot smarter than a lot of solomon great players because he has played this pretty well um being able to have resources like will of the solomon great to possibly even bring out his falco so we can even make a link for play hey my opponent got lucky with the uh the uh um my apologies with the hey true nade in the mind control i want to see if he can do it again and that's if you ask me that's the correct approach to take Yu Gi Oh. um sometimes your opponent just opens the nuts don't get discouraged from your opponent opening the nuts make them do it again and if they do it again then you know it is what it is he's gonna go ahead and activate solomon great sanctuary now having to adjust his play because of the call by the grave and then he's gonna send the solomon great sunlight wolf to the graveyard for the summon of his second solomon great sunlight wolf now since sunlight wolf is used as a link material using its own monster all he has to do is gain the wolf effect to add his will of the solomon greats and he can put more monsters on the side of the field he's going to activate that will of the solomon great sending it to the graveyard thomas yang has no responses for this and he's going to be able to spell summon two solomon great monsters to his side of the field one where we're solomon great sunlight wolf points to or none where solomon great ah, i guess it doesn't matter because he's going to exceed summon where it points to anyways he's then going to go ahead and use both of those monsters no for a link summon whoa this man is thinking big brain plays for a nightmare phoenix to destroy the other one. Duh. Yeah, he did. He didn't go first. So he's definitely skeptical on what Thomas Yang has faced down. If you ask me, if it was a second call by the grave, he would have just willed it. I, 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 I kind of, uh, I, I can't think of what it would because if it was a solemn warning, he would have used that too. I can't think of any meta relevant cards right now that wouldn't have already been used 
uh, you know, for you to Nightmare Phoenix. But in, anyways, he's just playing a little bit on the safe side. I think I would have probably played a little more aggressive, seeing that you probably would have second called by the Grave Me by now. You would have hand trapped me by now. I would have lost because of those cards by now. Let me just play it to the best of my ability. He's going to use Urgent Schedule to Special Summon Fine Pegasus Stampede and Super Bullet, Super Express Bullet Train to his side of the field. And Stampede has that effect on Summon to make itself level 10, which doesn't really mean anything. Um, he's going to be able to draw a card through the Nightmare Phoenix and as well as add the Gazelle back into his hand. So even with a quote-unquote mediocre board, he still has two monsters that can attack over his opponent's monsters. And on top of that, he still has five cards in his hand. So that's not like completely terrible. On top of that, the Mirage Stallio would have just... I would have been able to make the Mirage Stallio to bring the Jack Jaguar to my side of the field. But something like Wolf's already on the side of the field, it doesn't really matter. Um, he's going to use Falco's effect to set the will of the Solomon Great back to his side of the field. And I hope that he has some form of disruptions in his hand. He has two cards phased down additionally to his will of the Solomon Great. So it looks like he'll be able, even with the not so great monster present, he might be able to do something. Um, trying to figure out why he didn't attack. Does it make him like some type of attack? Uh, special summon. Wait, why didn't he attack? That don't make no sense. Why didn't you attack? This is zero defense during the end phase. I, I don't. Well, why didn't you? He didn't have anything. Did, what, why would you? Did you? Think it, can you not attack? Okay, we're just. I'm pretty sure you guys in the comment section will be able to tell me. Hey, Cali Effect, he couldn't do this because, or just say if it was a complete goofy goo bird. This time around, Thomas Yang actually has the mind control for the Sunlight Wolf, which is an amazing play. Uh, he Lewis is forced to use one of his card effects right here, right now. Um, or lose his Solomon Great Sunlight Wolf if he has the Roar, then go ahead and use Roar to destroy these two cards. If he has Rage and Roar, use the, is it, Ra whichever one, use the, or, I'm sorry, if he has the Rage, Rage destroys cards, I believe, and then Roar negates the Mind Control. So if he has both of those, he has to negate the Mind Control and then destroy cards, which he does have the Roar. Did I say it right? Yeah, I think I said it right the second time around. He's going to use the Roar to negate the Mind Control and then just hope that you have the Rage phase down I mean, which kind of doesn't matter because Thomas is kind of loaded in this front. I'm still trying to figure out why did you attack? Like, what is going on? I don't think that there was a single card that prevented you from attacking. I'm not seeing it right now. W what are you doing? And he only has a thousand attack. He has eighteen hundred attack. He has zero defense. Like, or, or, like, they is he, you cannot declare attacks. I, I don't understand. I, I just. I don't understand why he didn't attack. I am so confused. I'm lost. I would at least try to attack, even if there was something preventing me. I mean, you guys know me. I'm I'm a bad player sometimes. <laughs> so he's going to go ahead and make a Nightmare Phoenix on his own, obviously destroying the other face down card that uh, Heathrow Lewis does. And just like how Lewis had his pointing to a Solomon Great Sun like Wolf, he's going to be able to have that co-link. So he's going to be able to draw a card. So Lewis is in a tough spot. If that is a roar, please... Please, if that was a if that was a rage, you should have used that on the two monsters. Don't don't try to play me. You knew that he had a nightmare phoenix. It's a generic link card. Please tell me that is not a. It is a freaking rage, lady. What are you doing? You knew he was gonna make the nightmare phoenix. You knew it. You knew it. You you. There was like no way. You knew it after he mind controlled. You knew. What are you doing? Oh my god, that is definitely a what are you doing play. I mean, yeah, I, I guess there was the off chance that he didn't make the Nightmare or the Nightmare Phoenix, but you just basically gave him another draw. So if his hand wasn't this, you basically just gave this to him. Oh man. So imagine if the Ash Blossom was his first card. He would have probably drawn it. If he would have drawn into that, I mean, come on now. You play Yu-Gi-Oh. So he's gonna normal summon the Night Express and then special summon the Super Express Bullet Train. Use both of those monsters for an Exceed Summon to you guessed it, the Gustav Rail Cannon. And then Exceed Summon on top of that again into a Dreadnought after detaching to inflict 2,000 damage to your opponent. This is how you win with trains in 2019, ladies and gentlemen. You make Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Juggernaut. And inflict an insane amount of damage after inflicting 2,000 more. As long as you can inflict 6,000 damage to your opponent in one turn, which Juggernaut can do because Link Monsters can't be in defense, then you have this, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. Let's get you into that deck profile, though.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, so on to the deck profile. Thomas is running three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. I feel like this is actually the correct uh, number of hand traps and the correct hand trap to run because Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring does hit so many decks across the board. You're not always expecting to play meta, and uh, a lot of times when you're not always expecting to play a meta, Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring is the way to go. But if you guys are expecting to play more meta or just want a different flavor of the month, Effect Mailer is a tough... If, if, if Effect Mailer is number two, then it is a... A hard number two it, it's not going any lower if because it can be number one easily effect Valor hits almost just as many as matchups but can also hit more, it can hit better cards like uh ash blossom and joy spring can't stop sunlight wolf uh uh you know effect Valor can ash blossom and joy spring just has a better applications against certain matchups so either one of those could be played uh next is flying pegasus row road stampede if this card is normal summon or special summon you can target one earth machine monster in your graveyard except for itself special summon it in defense position but negate its effects you can target one other face-up monster you control the level of that monster or this card becomes the level of the other so this card can make itself a level or it can make another monster level four or it can make itself another monster's level keep in mind that that monster that you target doesn't have to be a machine monster it can be anything that you want to your side of the build to manipulate this card or that card's level you cannot declare attacks the turn that you activate this effect except with exceed monsters that's um that's you know that's kind of fair seeing that it's an XC deck you want it to stay particular to XC cards uh next is heavy freight train duracane uh if an earth machine monster is normal summon a special summon you can spell summon this card from your hand but its original attack and defense becomes half which is fair 2800 attack would be a little too much for a monster that can just be summoned with ease you can only use duracane once per turn if this card is detached as an XC material or this card is detached from an XC monster and since the graveyard to activate a monster's effect you can detach you can just target one card your opponent controls destroy it Card's amazing, actually, because you can make it on your super or your number 81 Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Super Dora. Make it unaffected by card effects and destroy an opponent's card. So that's pretty good. Uh, three copies of Jizakiru. This card's also amazing because not only is it a kaiju to disrupt your opponent, but if you open two, you give your opponent the kaiju, you summon the kaiju to your side of the villain. Congratulations. You have a level 10 machine monster, so you can start making your uh, number 81, your Super Dreadnought, or your Juggernaut to your side of the field. Next is three copies of Night Express Knight. Not really much else to say other than it is a normal summoner level of to level 10 monster. Three copies of Super Express Bullet Train. You cannot declare an attack unless you send two other cards you control to the graveyard. That is the worst effect of all time. You can only use each effect of Bullet Train once per turn. If all monsters you control are Earth Machines, you can spell summon this card from your hand. During your end phase, if this card is in the graveyard because it was sent there in this turn, you can target one machine monster in your graveyard except for itself added to your hand. This is probably why he didn't want to attack, but now that you like when you think about it when you sit here and seriously think about it you still should have attacked let's say in the hypothetical that you attack both monsters he would have been able to add the flying pegasus row roll stampede to his side of the field normal summon it and then you have solomon grave roar and rage to stop his normal summon as you guys can see this deck is heavily reliant on the normal summon so if you attack into both monsters you give your opponent the stampede back but they have the normal summon even if you only attack the stampede and leave them with the bullet train your opponent uses their normal summon like night express knight to the side of the field and then you solomon great war them I, I i just don't even know why why he didn't attack at least one of the monsters if not both i talked to my boy thomas about it he was like the correct play would be to roar on the standby phase instead of attacking but i i mean i don't think that that's a bad idea that would have been way better than what he would have did I probably would have just attacked both monsters and then made you waste your normal summon and then got over you and be like, what are you going to do now? You need more extenders. He also has plays three called by the grave. That's pretty standard. And then the six cards, the six cards of the spice, allowing him to go second is three a true nade for back row disruption and three mind control for monster disruption. He has six copies of mine or monster and spell and trap manipulation. He'll be able to play Yu-Gi-Oh! even if he does go second. Three copies of, or, you know, and on top of that with little hand traps. Three copies of Pot of Desires. Uh, I mean, you run three of just about everything. Pot of Desires is practically free in here. Actually, you run three of everything. Pot of Desires is free in here. Um, he runs three copies of Revolving Sit Shard. If a level 10 Earth Machine Monster is normal summoned or it's about to summon to your side of the field, you can activate its effect. Your opponent takes no battle damage, or takes no, yeah, takes no battle damage for the rest of the turn, even if this card leaves the field. You can also spell someone with level 4 Earth Machine Monster with 800 or more attack from your deck. And if you do, it becomes level 10. You can send one card from your hand to the graveyard, add one level 10 Machine Monster from your deck to your hand. So, this is really good for not only being able to tutor out the Stampede, there was actually another level 10 or level 4 uh, Earth Machine Monster that could be summoned off this card, and I think it gets you a search 
or recursion from your graveyard. I'm not 100% sure which one. And I think that that's pretty good. But the way that Thomas has this deck built, uh, this is actually pretty cool. I, I probably wouldn't change anything in it. It's a very awesome deck. He also runs the Mecha Hornet Drones to turn it into one of his Sky Striker cards, which is free links. Three Twin Twisters and then three Urgent Schedule. If your opponent controls more monsters than you do, special one level four or lower in one level five or higher machine monster in, in your deck in the fifth position, but negate their effects. You cannot declare an attack the turn you activate this card except with machine monsters. If this card is sent to the graveyard, if the set card is sent to the graveyard, you can add one level 10 machine monster from your deck to your hand. So pretty good. Uh, in certain situations, I guess you can twin twisters yourself, destroying your opponent's card and this card to search a level 10. So I, I really can't complain with that. One thing I want to say is that he doesn't run terraforming, which uh, in essence, I don't think it's necessarily needed. Revolving switch art is good, but probably not that good to dedicate resources to. For a side deck, three side frame gear gammas. We can only assume that this is, you know, obviously for pesky hand trap decks or, you know, when he wants to negate monster effects. Shot all beast, shot all dragon. He sides into the shot all engine. Uh, three copies of Infinite Impermanence and three copies of Rev Reboot. One thing I really want to point out to you, Thomas, is that you don't run skill drain. Skill drain is really good. Like, I don't, uh, maybe I'd cut an impermanence. I don't know, no, no, I don't know exactly what I would cut, but skill drain will win games against a lot of the decks. Sky Striker, Solomon, Great Thunder Dragon, you skill drain them, you're, you're set to go. And, and on top of that, you have monsters that have restrictions. This card's attack becomes zero, but under skill drain, it's a normal summon of 3k. This guy needs to send two other cards to the graveyard to attack, but under skill drain, he can just attack freely. You have so many situations where you, you can just summon 3,000 monsters to your side of the field, and your opponent is hampered by skill drain. Now, I'm not saying putting in the main deck. Heck, I'm not even saying maybe consider putting in its, or putting in a side deck. I'm saying consider that card. Next, he runs two Shekinaga, one Abyss Dweller, uh, one number 81, two uh, copies of Rail Cannon Juggernaut. This can be made with both the Super Dora and the Gustav Max. Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn, Pentastag, which is really, really good. It inflicts piercing damage to your opponent. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to get you game, even if your opponent has defense versus monsters. Cleaford Genius, Hayate, Kagari, Kana, and an Underclock Taker, which is also really good for reducing opponent's monsters attack when you make that super cannon juggernaut. Basically, the, the basis of this deck is that you want to summon this card and you want to go for a game. If you're making Pentastag, then you're going to attack your opponent's monsters and then inflict a huge amount of damage because it's a 6,000 beater. If your opponent has monsters at our attack position, multiple link monsters, this card will probably do it on its own with Gustav Max. But you also do have Underclock Taker just in case. Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I also want to give a mass special thanks to every single one of my Patreons. Without you guys, videos like this would not be possible. Please like, comment, subscribe. But most of all, enjoy. I hope you guys are having a great day like I am.